I think with something like court packing, because it is so norm driven that once we see more of these attempts and some of them actually succeeding, it then just becomes something that folks realize they can do. And so then we start to see more of these attempts in, in states across the country. The court packing attempts can fall into certain categories. Some of them, at least as articulated by the General Assembly, are in response to particular court decisions. We saw that in Florida, we saw that in Iowa. Um, in other states though, what we see is um, General Assembly trying to defend court packing on the grounds that uh, we need to expand the court for case management purposes. We just need more bodies on the courts because the caseload is up. Often though, those explanations don't really hold up under scrutiny. That certainly was true in Arizona. And if we think about federal court packing, that was what FDR claimed was really uh, at issue with the Supreme Court in the late 1930s. And we know that was a, a pretext, really. There are two different goals oftentimes with attempts to pack or unpack a court. So the first is that you know, you'd actually succeed and then you would be able to appoint say, more members of the court who would be sympathetic to whatever your political position is, um, or alternatively, you'd be able to take away some seats, you know, and then have a court that's more favorable to you, the folks who are left over. But the other is that even if you're not successful in your attempt, that you, you do get the judges or justices to pay attention, and they might then moderate their decisions. That's certainly what happened with the United States Supreme Court, the famous switch in time that saved the nine. You know, you start to see key justices switching positions um, which in many ways was, I think, ultimately what FDR wanted.